What is uranium? Uranium is a heavy metal, part of the actinide series on the periodic table represented by the chemical symbol U. It's one of the most talked about elements in modern history, mainly due to its ability to generate enormous amounts of energy. Yes, we're talking about the core of nuclear reactors that power entire cities, and also the core of nuclear weapons that can wipe out those same cities in seconds. It's this duality, power and peril, that makes uranium so fascinating. But there's more. Uranium is naturally radioactive, which means it constantly emits invisible energy in the form of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. These emissions aren't just scientific curiosities, they're at the heart of what makes uranium so useful and so dangerous. From fueling submarines that can stay underwater for months, to being central in international debates and geopolitical tensions, uranium isn't just a metal, it's a force that shapes the world. What makes uranium truly valuable is its radioactive nature. This unique property allows it to release energy through a process called nuclear fission. When uranium atoms are split in controlled environments like nuclear reactors, they release an intense amount of heat. This heat is then transformed into electricity, powering millions of homes around the world. Uranium is naturally found in the Earth's crust, and believe it or not, it's more common than gold or silver. But here's the catch. It's never found in its pure metallic form. Instead, uranium occurs in minerals such as uraninite and carnitite, which need to be extracted and processed before they can be used. The world's largest uranium reserves are concentrated in just a handful of nations. Kazakhstan, Canada, Australia, Russia, South Africa, and the United States dominate global production. These countries play a crucial role in the nuclear energy market, shaping policies and fueling both innovation and controversy. The way uranium is found in nature depends heavily on the type of geological deposit it's stored in. And just as its location varies, so too do the techniques required to mine and process it. Understanding these different deposit types is key to grasping how uranium is sourced and why it's such a strategic resource on the world stage. There are three main types of uranium deposits found in nature, igneous rock deposits, sandstone deposits, and sedimentary rock deposits. Igneous deposits form when uranium is concentrated within rocks like granite and rhyolite, usually in regions with past or current volcanic activity. These deposits often require underground mining, a labor-intensive but effective method of extraction. On the other hand, sandstone-type deposits occur when uranium accumulates in loose sediments like sand and gravel. These are typically located in arid regions such as deserts or coastal zones, including areas like the Sahara Desert. The extraction here often involves sediment washing, a process that separates uranium from surrounding material using water. Sand-based uranium deposits are not exclusive to Africa. They're also found in countries like India and even Brazil. In fact, there's a well-known beach in Brazil, Praia da Areia Preta in Guarapari, Espirito Santo, where the sand itself contains thorium, a radioactive element that can be converted into uranium-233. Meanwhile, sedimentary rock deposits are formed when uranium accumulates in layered rocks like limestone and shale. These deposits may be accessed through both open pit mining and underground mining, depending on the depth and distribution of the ore. While uranium's potential is vast, it's essential to acknowledge the environmental footprint of its extraction, raising the question, how can we minimize the impact and make this powerful resource safer for the planet? Uranium extraction must be handled with extreme care and responsibility. This isn't just about getting the job done, it's about protecting both the planet and the people involved in the process. Mining companies are required to follow strict environmental and health regulations to ensure that workers, nearby communities, and ecosystems are not put at unnecessary risk. Once uranium-rich minerals are brought to the surface, the next step is to separate them from surrounding materials. Through a detailed refining process impurities are removed and the uranium is enriched, transforming it into a form suitable for use in nuclear fuel or other applications. But wait, if uranium is so dangerous, how can it be mined without putting workers in harm's way? That's a vital question. The answer lies in safety protocols. When properly followed, these protocols can significantly reduce the risks. During the mining process, radioactive gases like radon and fine radioactive particles may be released into the air. These substances can be inhaled by workers or escape into the surrounding environment. 
Without precautions, this exposure could lead to serious health problems, including cancer and long-term respiratory diseases. That's why protective measures aren't optional, they're absolutely essential. Ensuring the safety of uranium mining operations requires a multi-layered approach. Workers must be equipped with personal protective equipment, including respirators and radiation-resistant clothing. Work areas must be well ventilated to reduce the buildup of radioactive gases, and constant radiation monitoring must be performed to keep exposure levels in check. On top of that, it's not enough to just meet safety standards, companies need to invest in continuous training and education, helping every employee understand how to work safely and respond to emergencies. Following safety regulations isn't just about compliance. It's about creating a culture where every life is valued. But that leads us to an even deeper question. What exactly is a radioactive material and why is uranium radioactive in the first place? What exactly is a radioactive material? Simply put, it's a substance made up of unstable atoms, atoms whose nuclei spontaneously break apart over time. This process is known as radioactive decay, and when it happens it releases powerful energy in the form of particles, alpha, beta, and gamma. Each of these types of radiation carries different levels of risk. While alpha particles can be stopped by a sheet of paper, beta particles can penetrate the skin, and gamma rays go even further, passing through the body and potentially damaging vital tissues and DNA. That's why handling radioactive materials, especially uranium, requires serious precautions. The danger lies not in seeing the material, but in the invisible energy it releases. Uranium is radioactive because its atomic structure is inherently unstable. Among its isotopes, uranium-235 is particularly important. It's capable of undergoing nuclear fission, even when struck by low energy or thermal neutrons. That's why it's used as fuel in nuclear reactors. On the other hand, uranium-238, the more abundant isotope found in nature, can only be fissioned by high energy or fast neutrons, making it less efficient for energy production, but still valuable for other applications. These numbers, 235 and 238, refer to the atomic mass, which is the sum of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. For uranium-235, there are 92 protons and 143 neutrons. For uranium-238, it's 92 protons and 146 neutrons. When uranium atoms decay, they emit radioactive particles that can pose real threats to human health and the environment. Alpha particles might be stopped by your skin, but if inhaled or ingested, they can wreak havoc inside your body. Beta particles and gamma rays are even more dangerous due to their ability to penetrate deeper and damage cells from within. That's why strict safety measures are required whenever people work with uranium. If you're curious to see just how catastrophic radiation exposure can be, I highly recommend the HBO series Chernobyl. It gives a vivid, gut-wrenching look at what happens when radioactive material is mishandled and uncontrolled. It's not just entertainment, it's a wake-up call. Now you might be wondering, where is uranium actually used? As mentioned at the beginning of this video, the primary use is in nuclear reactors for generating electricity. When uranium is bombarded by neutrons inside a reactor, a chain reaction begins, splitting the atoms and releasing massive amounts of heat. This heat turns water into steam, which spins turbines connected to generators, ultimately producing electricity. It's a process that powers cities without emitting carbon dioxide, making it a contender in the fight against climate change. If you're interested in understanding how a nuclear power plant works, I'll link to a dedicated video at the end of this one where we explain the entire process in detail. But uranium's role doesn't stop at energy. It's also used in the production of nuclear weapons. In this case, uranium-235 is enriched to a much higher concentration than what is used in reactors. Once enriched, it becomes a key component in nuclear bombs, initiating a powerful chain reaction when struck by neutrons resulting in a catastrophic explosion. Beyond these high-stakes uses, uranium has many other applications. In medicine, for example, uranium isotopes are used in both diagnosis and treatment. Nuclear medicine takes advantage of radioactive isotopes for imaging techniques like CT scans and gamma cameras, and uranium-238 is even used in cancer therapies due to its potent radiation, which can destroy cancerous cells. Uranium is also pushing the boundaries in space exploration. It serves as a fuel source for certain types of spacecraft propulsion systems that rely on small-scale nuclear reactors. These systems heat a fluid using fission, causing it to expand and drive turbines that generate mechanical energy for propulsion. 
In other industrial uses, uranium compounds are used to produce specialized ceramics and glass, where it adds color and luminosity. It's also applied in scientific research, helping scientists study atomic structure and nuclear behavior. Believe it or not, uranium has even found a place in fluorescent paints, nuclear-powered batteries and advanced heating systems. Despite its wide range of uses, uranium is highly regulated. This isn't a substance you can use freely, it's controlled, monitored, and managed by international and national authorities to prevent misuse and protect public health. So now that you know how powerful and versatile uranium is, what do you think? Should we expand its use to help meet the world's growing energy demands? Let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear your take on it. And before you go, don't forget to check out the two videos I'm linking here on the side especially the one where we dive deep into how nuclear power plants actually work. If you found this video informative, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share it with someone who might also be curious about the power and potential of uranium. That's it for today, engineering lovers, a big hug, and I'll see you in the next video.